Okay, well, we've got more on the Micah Parsons drama, and come on, is he really a realistic option for the Eagles? While another top 30 visit with an O-lineman is taking place. Plus, Iowa's Cooper DeGene is without question a chess piece, but how would he fit in Fangio's defense? And despite the plethora of weapons on offense, the Birds are bringing in a monster of a wide receiver, as the case continues to be made to add another playmaker. But with so many choices, what's the right one? So let's talk about it. But first, let's run it. What's up, everybody? Let's give a shout out to Fletcher Cox, who held his retirement presser today to thank everyone while talking about his career and playing in Philly. To the city of Philadelphia, uh, you know, it's, it's been important that, you know, uh, we all seen this day come and I always knew this day would come with me. Um, and, you know, the city of Philly is tough to play for. Um, and, you know, playing in Philly, you got to have thick skin, especially being drafted in the first round. So to the city of Philadelphia, I thank you a whole lot. Definitely going to miss seeing that dude playing the Midnight Green, but it probably won't be the last time he's at the Birds facility. However, it definitely won't be week one. As the Eagles are set to play in Brazil, and despite initial rumblings about it being the Browns, Packers president Mark Murphy hinted even more at the annual tailgate tour, saying we're either the first or second most popular team in Brazil. And while I personally hate hearing that sentence because it means I won't be in attendance for that game, we still don't know for sure, so let's just hold off until we know exactly where the cheeseheads are going to be at. Because, you know, my wife is wanting to see them play the link, and I wouldn't also mind seeing the Birds beat the Packers there. One thing we do at least have a little more certainty on, though, is that the Eagles are giving every indication they'll take offensive line in this draft. I mean, probably in the first round, but yeah, definitely at least within the first couple rounds, since eight of the 20 visits reported have been road graders. Of course, I talked about Washington's Troy Fotanu in my most recent video, and a couple others as well, with his nasty streak being pretty appealing to Philly O-line coach Jeff Stoutland. However, there's another Washington player who's naturally caught Stout's eye in Rod Roger Rosengarten, with a 6'5", 308-pound tackle testing as one of the most athletic offensive linemen in the draft, as Double R ran a 4'9'2", FYI, the position best time at the NFL Combine, leading to a formal meeting afterward with the 21-year-old because, as we all know, if there's one thing the Bird's legendary coach can work with, it's athleticism. Having been successful most notably with 7th round pick Jordan Mailata and turning him into one of the best in the game. So with Rosengarten's strengths being that athleticism and physicality and loading up for a meaningful first punch, the Eagles are officially bringing him in for a visit. Now, the negative for this dude is he's been listed as below average as a bender and still needs to work with his hand placement. However, a move inside to guard should really help that, which is honestly perfect because that's exactly what Philly needs anyway. And again, the writing's on the wall for the prospect Howie Roseman's targeting too. As Pro Football Network's Anthony DeBona pointed out that of the eight offensive linemen the Birds are hosting on a top 30 visit, six of them have a relative athletic score of 9.2 or higher, otherwise translated as freakishly athletic. And by the way, the other two, it's not like they're not athletic, it's just that they don't have an RAS available, but it's fair to assume they're athletes as well. Oh, geez, look at the butt on that. Yeah. He must work out. I guess you could say, thankfully, the Eagles need an offensive tackle this year. Since draft expert Daniel Jeremiah has mentioned multiple times that if you need a tackle or wide receiver, this is your draft. I mean, we're all on the same page about needing an offensive lineman in this draft. However, judging by the previous comments in a lot of different videos, it's not necessarily the case for wide receiver. However, doesn't conventional wisdom say take advantage of the surplus and draft the best player available? Let me clarify, within reason. Naturally, the trenches is the most logical place, and UCLA's Leitu Latu would be a surefire way to bolster the pass rush. Yet, uh, six of the top 12 picks have hosted the best pure pass rusher in the class on a visit. So, I don't know. You've definitely got to trade up, but how far would you be willing to trade up for a guy like Latu. And continuing on the whole surplus comment, what about receiver? I mean, I've done a lot of talk recently about guys on the roster with Paris Campbell being the clear favorite, not only based on his ability and speed within Kellen Moore's system, but also his confidence to effectively mark his territory on the spot right now. Or there's the thought that Devontae Parker could have a resurgence and get more playing time if Devontae Smith moves inside at least a little more to play the slot. And then let's not forget about trade targets of John Mechie as well. But either way, most, if not all of these, are short-term options. So I figured, you know what, let's do this. Let's get into the draft option and potential longer range targets to see who the Eagles might draft later this month. So first, let's start with Texas wide receiver Xavier Worthy. Naturally, anytime records are broken, it's definitely going to turn some heads, as Philly ended up having a formal meeting at the Combine with the NFL's fastest man, 
and then parlayed that up for another meet and greet during his pro day a few weeks ago. Add to it Sirianni's love for a speedster slash burner as his wide receiver three option, plus Deshaun Jackson giving his stamp of approval on the six foot one wideout, and it's easy to see why there'd be some interest. Oh yeah, this dude is still only 20 years old and doesn't turn 21 until day two of the draft, which really makes me feel old. But with that kind of potential and the always present ability to turn one into six, I wouldn't mind seeing him in the Kelly Green. Although personally, there's a couple options I'd go with over worthy, like Florida's Ricky Pearsall, for example, who at 6'1", 190 pounds, ran a 4'4", one and posted a 42 inch vertical while grading out as a guy who will eventually be a plus starter. Because in case you're for some reason not familiar with Pearsall, he makes life easier on the quarterback being labeled as a crafty route runner with an impressive knowledge for manipulating certain coverage looks and leverages. Again, another reason why Philly's doing its homework on Pearsall and held a formal meeting at the Combine as well as at the Senior Bowl with the 23-year-old. Plus, let's look at it this way. Teams know Jalen Hurts struggles against the Blitz, so we better believe that he's going to see a ton of that next season, and the idea of a crafty route runner with a guy who can for sure get open certainly helps that. Also, one other thing to point out, the Inquirer's Devin Jackson shared that Pearsall is one of the better blocking wideouts in the class, with him saying he prides himself in those situations and calls himself a student of the game. Not gonna lie, Pearsall might be my favorite option when it comes to who the bird should take. Plus, you know, Howie Roseman is a Florida guy himself. I I'm a Florida Gator. Do you know how much this hurts my soul to take all these Georgia Bulldogs? <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a question on whether or not this guy's going to be good. It's really just the weaknesses of potential, a little bit of a limited off-catch radius whenever it comes to throws that are not on target, and aggressive cornerbacks can seem to get him a little bit off balance. Although when 4th and John asked him what he brings to the field, he was definitely confident in what the Eagles could be getting. A consistent guy. I think uh, I'm very consistent. You know? um, I'm always going to be putting the work on the workhorse, so what they're going to get out of me is you know, a consistent route running, consistent person. You know, I think being a good football player player is one thing, but being a good person off the field too is another, you know what I mean, but um, I'm also an explosive player, I'm able to go out there and make big plays, you know, when the ball's in the air, it's mine, at the end of the day, that's how I'm thinking, and like you said, I'm a confident player, so anytime I get one of my matches, I'm thinking I'm going to you know what I mean, so being able to show everybody that. All right, what do y'all think about Pearsall, and would you take him over Western Kentucky's Malachi Corley? Honestly, it's a close call for me, because anytime a guy is described as the Yak King, that'll get a lot of attention. And with Kellen Moore's offense relying on more motion and versatility and getting the wide receiver three involved, Corley could be the perfect fit. I mean, seriously, it's not even close when you compare his ranking to every other receiver in the class when it comes to yards after the catch. Like, this dude turns a mediocre play into explosive plays with regularity, and is someone who's been described as a certified dog at 5'11", 215 pounds, with an NFL comparison of Debo Samuel. No, don't like that. Yeah, well, me neither. But putting all bias aside, it could be really intriguing to add a gadget weapon to this offense like Corley. By the way, in case you're wondering, Andrew DeCecco reported that the 22-year-old ran a 4.46 at his pro day, so definitely possesses enough long-range speed to go with his quick twitch and physicality. The Eagles also met with Corley following his pro day, so it's not like there's no interest there either. And he's the one dude that Steve Smith Sr. has dubbed as the wide receiver still of the draft this year not just a guy like some other receiver. So I'll say it again. I'm sorry that I said you were a Jag, just a guy who's an average wide receiver that you use a first round pick on. You know, another pass catcher who's not just a guy is South Carolina's Xavier Leggett. Like for real, Adam Kaplan said sources tell him the 23-year-old may have the most upside of any wide receiver in this year's draft class, saying he's built like a tight end but moves like a receiver, and that he was the tone setter in practices and his 2023 breakout season was no fluke. Which, uh, yeah, for those of you that have watched film on him, you already knew that. Because not only does this guy possess 439 speed at 6'1", 225 pounds, but he's been compared to A.J. Brown. As ESPN's Teron Davenport wrote, Leggett and Brown are eerily similar when it comes to their body movements and style of play. Both players are well-built receivers who have the strength to run through tackles and the speed to pull away from defenders for long gains. They both display tremendous ball skills to go up and make contested catches as well. Really, the only difference is in their accents. Man, um, I'll be right down the road. It'll be a little easier for my family to come watch me play, so that'll be great. That's just them telling me down that they want me on their team, man. Um, a lot of coaches came and hollered at me before and after. After this process here, man, um, a lot of them, man, they, they um, say they got a buzz in their facility for me, man, and I'm just ready to see where I'm going. Oh, man, I say the deep ball, man, but uh, I really feel like any way that I get the ball in my hand, I could get it to that end zone. Not going to lie, I didn't expect him to sound like that whenever I first heard his accent a couple months ago. 
But reports are that his accent have actually boosted his draft stock even more. In all seriousness, though, Leggett plays with extreme physicality and isn't afraid to get involved in run blocking as well. I mean, I don't know if it makes as much sense when we really need a wide receiver three in the short term, but if you consider the long-term ramifications and investing in the position, then perhaps Leggett is a guy that makes some sense. Because unsurprisingly, he grades as one of the best versus man coverage and presents a constant deep threat. And not that it's his best position, but Leggett actually did play in the slot significantly. I mean, it was actually about a third of the time that he played in the slot for South Carolina last season. So he does offer some versatility. However, having gone over all of those different options, who would be your favorite choice for the birds to draft and why? Or maybe I should throw in one more option in Florida State's Johnny Wilson, after John Clark shared that the 6'6", 230-pound receiver met with the Eagles today. And it's kind of crazy because if you're not familiar with Wilson, he ran a 4'5", almost as fast as A.J. Brown, and actually outjumped Swole Batman with a 37-inch vertical. So it shouldn't be a surprise that Wilson owns one of the most dominant and impressive catch radiuses for receiving prospects in recent years. As scouts have called this dude a physical freak and a monster for opposing DBs to deal with. Another area to like is that Wilson also uses his size fairly well to outmuscle corners and isn't afraid to mix it up in the run game. However, the main area of emphasis for his game are that he struggles with very frustrating drops at times. Yet the intrigue is for sure there considering his unreal God-given ability. Of course, at his size, he could realistically just be considered as more of a tight end option, and with Goddard already older than Ertz was when we took Dallas, it'd make a lot of sense. Either way, seeing that the birds brought him in for an official visit, he's certainly a prospect to keep your eye on. While we're on the topic of versatility and prospects, Cooper DeGene is another name that continues to be brought up because he's a Swiss Army Knife chess piece, and a guy that Anthony DeBona writes should be valued in today's game thanks to his positionless skill set and Vic Fangio's preference for hybrid defenders. Plus, after dominating his pro day workout, running a 4-4-2 and a 38.5-inch vertical jump, there's no question he's getting drafted on day one. Heck, just take a look at DeGene's high school basketball highlights, and it's undeniable that the dude is an athlete. Although you or I didn't need that because his athleticism just shows up all over the tape. And with him drawing comparisons to Eagles' CJ Garner-Johnson, he automatically would make the birds better. I mean, if we think back to last season, it's pretty obvious that you can never have too much depth or athleticism in the secondary. However, I'll make mention that the couple knocks on DeGene are that he lacks elite fluidity and sometimes hurts his man coverage ability. Again, that's pretty minuscule. However, I doubt that he's available there at number 22, but if the Eagles end up landing him at 22, I'm going to be pretty happy. Now, another guy I'd love to be in Midnight Green, even though it's probably very unrealistic, is Micah Parsons after his apparent wearing thin report, and people within the Dallas organization wanting him gone. Yet surprisingly, not everyone's on board with him coming to Philly. I don't want him at all. Oh, you're crazy. No, I don't want him. He's he's an ego, all about me player. And he's a great it's, player. Well, but great, there's a lot of great players, but if they're all about themselves, they don't go anywhere. He's a great player. How, how does that help Dallas? Well, they have had a top seven defense every year he's been there. They were a bad and defense. What has that done for him? Well, what has that done well, for Well, the quarterback chokes and the coach oh, is a moron. Oh, okay. Well, it's just, so it's not one player. I don't want Micah Parsons. He is. He might be a really good player, but I think it's all about him. So wait, if the Cowboys called and you're Howie and they say, we'll give you him for the 22nd pick, you'd say no? Come on now. But you're not going to get him for the 22nd. All right, how about the 22nd pick and next year's one? No, oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Oh, that's, a, that's an easy yes. I don't want him. I do not want him. You're right. It's not realistic and it's not going to happen. However, just for the sake of the argument, if I had to give up this year's 22 and next year's first for Parsons, I'd do that in a heartbeat. Just my opinion, but I'd argue that you're crazy if you don't agree. Well, agree to disagree. Ultimately, though, this will just end up stirring up media controversies and speculation before Dallas comes to its senses and doesn't do anything about moving Micah. All right, this is definitely the slower part of the offseason, so curious to get y'all's thoughts on everything covered here, as well as what do you want me to talk about next in the upcoming video? I'll catch y'all in the next one. This has been the Philly Special.